Alright folks, welcome back to Final Fantasy IX. And this is going to be covering section D2-10 of Thomas's Excalibur 2 Perfect Game Guide. So we're going to begin by collecting the bandana before heading out into the wilderness. And the first thing we're going to want to do is call Choco. So head to the Chocobo tracks just outside the exit here. Now, if you're playing on PS4, as I am, uh, you can actually avoid this step just by turning off battle encounters and turning on high speed mode. You'll probably even do this quicker than by calling Choco in that case. But it doesn't really matter. Either way, you want to make your way over to Gizmaluk's uh, Grotto. And I haven't actually disabled random enemy encounters by this point. So it is possible to get an enemy encounter going through the grotto. I genuinely forgot to do that. Uh, but as you can see, you don't necessarily have to get an enemy encounter. So if you're not playing along on a system where you can disable them, then don't worry, you shouldn't be getting one anyway. And in fact, if you do, you'll probably want to restart and try again. We will be encountering enemies later on, and you'll want no more than six throughout this entire session of random enemy encounters. So you don't want to be getting one here, otherwise you're going to mess yourself up later on. Anyway, you're going to speak to the Moogle, hand over the Koopa Nut, get the Elixir. You're always going to get an Elixir for that Koopa Nut, though from this point on, you will get random prizes. So don't worry if you'll get different prizes than what I get. That's perfectly normal. Right, so we're done here, and as you can see, no enemies, so we're going to go ahead and jump back onto Choco here before making our way over to the marsh. At which point we are going to be going ahead and just changing the equipment round on our party, and we're going to do that thusly. Zidane is going to be wearing Exploder and the Adaman vest, and we're going to take off his other equipment. VV is going to be wearing the Flame Staff, the Mage's Hat, and the Coral Ring and we're going to be taking off his other equipment. And then Garnet will be using the Mithril Rod, the Mage's Hat and the Glass Armory, which he should already have equipped anyway. And then the Magician Robe, which I don't have. I did cock up on that. It's really annoying, but we'll get that later. Uh, that was from the auction in Trina. I'm not sure how I didn't get that. I've just got everything else except that. Uh, also the Power Belt as well for Dagger. So that will be everything you need in terms of equipment. We don't need to worry about abilities at the moment. Just make sure you sort those items out. And then, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and save our game before going into the marsh itself. There are a couple of annoying sections coming up in this particular part of the walkthrough, the playthrough. And I did have to restart a few times, but I'll mention those when we come to them. So if everything looks like it goes smoothly for me, then great. Uh, but it did actually require a few restarts. I've just edited it all into one episode, as always so as not to repeat things for you guys that are following along. So going into the marsh here, we're going to just head into the next area where Queena will be waiting for us, and we need to speak to Queena. So past the Moogles here. And this will kick off a brief scene, which is going to lead into the next area of the game, which is Fossil Roo. So we're not going to do any frog catching. What we are going to do is just head north here. And then straight over to the right hand side. And then we'll get another bit of dialogue involving Queena. Who seems to be smelling food as always. And so we're going to follow Queena over to this section. And yes. Queena breaks the chains. And so we can move on. So the first kind of bit that we have to actually concentrate on is coming up here. And this is where we have to run away from this enemy that's chasing us. And the way we do this is by running across three screens. And we have these blades that are trying to stop us. So on this first screen, just run at the top of the screen. And you'll be able to avoid those blades easiest. And then on the second screen, run at the bottom. And that should mean the enemy can't catch up with you. And then on this third and final screen, again run at the top. If you do that, you shouldn't have a big problem avoiding the encounter and there we go and now in this next area we're going to have another cutscene followed by a boss battle
So this particular fight we're about to engage in took me about eight attempts to get down correctly and this is the way we need to do it. We're going to start by having VV attack Zidane physically and he will do 18 points of damage. That's not based on luck, if you set your characters up as I have, he will do that. And so long as he hasn't leveled of course, which he shouldn't have done. Uh, Dagger will be killed automatically by this point, right at the start of the fight. That's the first attack that takes place, Dagger is killed. I'm going to use Queen just to resurrect Dagger, though that's optional, you can do that afterwards. Here's what you need to do. With Zidane, uh, on exactly 87 points of health, so 7 is the second digit. We're going to cast Lucky 7 on the boss, and hopefully you'll do 777 damage. So Lucky 7 can do any damage amount that involves the number 7, so you can do 7... 77, 777, or 7,777. So you need it to do that fourth number only, because that's what will end the battle for you. Any characters that are dead by this point after that fight, resurrect them. And then we're just going to very briefly change some equipment round, which is going to involve optimising Zidane and giving him the dagger. And then giving Vivi the ice staff and the silk robe. And then just optimising the other people's equipment. In terms of abilities, try and give everyone the Insomniac ability. And or at least whoever has it, the Insomniac ability, you can get that from anybody that's wearing a bandana and coral, or coral ring, rather, I should say. Uh, Vivi also needs to have the Loudmouth ability equipped. Now, if you don't have those abilities, it's not absolutely essential, but it is going to help out uh, probably immensely throughout this upcoming section. Especially Insomniac. Okay, so once we've sorted that out, we're going to head back to the start of this area and grab an elixir. Now, you can get random enemy encounters at this point, but do not disable them, because you need to actually fight against two abominations. And the reason for that is you need to learn the knight ability, a blue magic ability for Queena. So the way we do this is by having VV cast Blizzard on one of the abominations here, and then have Queena quickly follow up by eating that abomination. That will teach Queen of the Knight ability, at which point we can use Zidane because he's got the dagger equipped to cast Flea and we'll escape the fight then without any experience. So that's all we need to do on this, but we do need to do it on these two abominations. So make sure you encounter these before getting back um, to the start of this particular dungeon. So once you've obviously done this and have learned Knight, you can then disable random enemy encounters. I was quite fortunate in that I got this on my first battle, these two enemies, and was able to get this quite quickly. But it might take a few attempts of uh, entering random enemy encounters in order to actually encounter two abominations. But remember, six is the most enemy encounters you want to engage. Any more than that and you've wasted too much time. And six really is the limit. The guide recommends five. If you can't actually disable random enemy encounters because you're not playing uh, on one of the modern ports of the game, then you'll have to just make sure that you count the amount of enemies you fight, as in the amount of encounters you do, and don't let it go past six. All the way by the time we get to the next save point. If it goes past six, then you'll want to restart. So grab the elixir from that room that was blocked off the first time we went past it, and then we're going to run back to where we just fought that last boss. And we're nearly done now with this session. And from here we're going to head down the stairs. And we have a little bit of a interesting scene here where we see a, a gar garden, are they? I forget what they're called. Sudan's about to tell us. Gargant, that's the one. So we're going to want to grab the flower and then we'll use this to call that Gargant and he'll bring us to the next area. So you can still get random enemy encounters here, just be careful of that. Uh, you want to head into this next area where the Moogles are waiting for us, whoop de doo da So a couple of things we want to do. First of all, we want to purchase Stiltskin's latest wares. And we want to do the Mognet to read a letter from Mogkey. Or to Mogkey, I should say. And then we also want to unequip our party of all their gear. And that'll be it. We can save our game at that point and we'll check out our time.
Alright then, so my time is 4 hours 34 minutes and 2 seconds. The target time in the Thomas's series is 4 hours and 55 minutes and 41 seconds. So we're a good 20 minutes ahead of schedule by this point, uh, which is what I'd expect due to the extra features that the PS4, iOS and PC version offers for us. So hopefully this video has helped you out. Don't forget to leave a like if it has and also to confirm your time in the comments section. It's always interesting seeing how many people are actually racing ahead of the time I've got. Uh, but hey, I've got no issues with that. I think we're definitely going to be getting Excalibur 2 along with everything else that we're meant to be doing. So thanks for stopping by today, folks, and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more Final Fantasy IX. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.